الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا حبيب إله العالمين أبا القاسم محمد وعلى سهره ووصيه ونجيبه وباب مدينة علمه وكتاب صحيفة فهمه والكاشف عن قربه وبأسه والنائم في بيته وفراشه زينة المحراب والمسجد والمنبر ساق السلسبيل والتسنيم والكوثر قاتل عمر ومرحب وعنتر الطائف بالصيفين والطائف برمهين والمصلين إلى قبلتين الذي لم يعبد صنما طرفة عين إمام المشارق والمغارب مظهر العجائب والغرائب نقطة دائرة المطالب أسد الله الغالب غالب على كل غالب مولانا علي بن أبي طالب اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آلهم الطيبين الطاهرين المعشمين المظلومين لا سيما بقية الله في الأراضين أرواحنا لتراب مقدمه الفداء الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد ولعنة الدائمة السرمدية على أعدائهم وقتلتهم وغاصب حقوقهم ومنكر فضائلهم ومناقبهم من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد فقد قال عز من قائل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا صدق الله العلي العظيم in the Al Jawad Center, which is in the name of the ninth holy Imam, Imam Al Jawad alayhi salatu wasalam, I take the privilege of reciting the celebration and the birth and the mawlid of his son, Imam Al Hadi alayhi salatu wasalam, and the succession of his grandfather Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi please recite one loudest salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad on this occasion I extend my felicitations and tabriq to Imam of our time Hujjat ibn al-Hasan sahib al-Asr al-Zaman alayhi salam Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad and to the mu'mineen and mu'minat gathered here and worldwide. And I pray to Almighty Allah to grant us the ziyarat of Ahl al-Bayt in this world and their shafa'a in the hereafter. And for the acceptance of these du'a, please recite with loudness of salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. We are discussing today on two Ali. One first Ali of the Imam and the last Ali of the Imam. The tenth Imam is the last Ali. We have four Ali in the twelve Imams. The first one is Amir al Mu'minin Ali. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The second one is Ali Zain al Abideen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The third one is Ali al-Rida, Imam alayhi salatu wa salam. And the fourth Ali is Imam Ali al-Hadi, the tenth Imam, whose birthday is today. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So today we are celebrating two Ali. The first Ali, Amir al-Mu'minin, the succession of the day of Ghadir. And the last Ali of the Imam, the 10th Imam, Ali al-Hadi alayhi salatu wassalam. And I would say that 
in the Holy Quran, Almighty Allah has mentioned about inna iddata shuhuri inda Allah ithna ashara shahran fi kitabillahi yawma khalaqa samawati wal ard. Almighty Allah mentions about the 12 Imams in the Holy Quran by saying that these are the months, the 12 Imams are 12 months. I like 12 months of this year and this entire creation, there are 12 Imams and these were created before Yawma Khalaqa Samawati Wal Ard. They were Imams also the day when the skies and the earth were created. So the Imama of Amir al muminin also did not start on the 18th of Zil Hajj or on the day of Ghadir. It was before when the skies and the earth were created. And four of them are Imam Ali. Four of them are Ali out of these 12 Imams. Now one thing we know First, I will concentrate on Imam Ali al-Hadi and then I will go to compare the history of Ghadir with the Holy Quran, insha'Allah ta'ala, and that will be uh, the, the way I will, I will uh, discuss for tonight, insha'Allah. So, as regards Imam al-Hadi we have four Ali's as I mentioned. We know about one book of dua from Imam al-Sajjad and that is Sahih Fatih Sajjadiyya. That is the only book of dua which we know about. But if at all you search in history and you look into history, all four Ali who are Imams, they have enough duas like Sahih Fatih Sajjadiyya. But those books have not been compiled except the duas of Imam Ali have been compiled as Sahih Fatih al -Alawiyya which is there for download also on the apps and it is available as a book also the du'as of Amir al muminin like that of Imam al-Sajjad of Sahih Fatih al-Sajjadiyya we also have the du'as equivalent to Sahih Fatih al-Sajjadiyya of our eight Imam, Imam al rada also but they have according to my information up till now and the limited uh, research that I have I have not seen extraction done and the compilation done of his du'as which he has uh, recited and recommended and which are there in the history. And the tenth holy imam, he also has so many du'as which can be compiled, which have not been compiled according to my knowledge. But there is something extra about Imam al-Hadi The tenth imam, the Imam al-Hadi, whose birthday we are celebrating today, there is one thing special about him is that he has taught us how to give our respects to our the Hujjatullah and the Imams of the time. And therefore, there is one ziyara which is a long ziyara which you know, inshallah, Muhammadin are reciting, and there is ziyara til jama'at al kabira. <coughs> This is from the tenth Imam والسلام, He has shown us the way how to salute and how to respect our Imams. And in that long ziyara, he mentions, "Kaifa asifu husna thanaitum." How can I encompass? How can I count? How can I gather? How can I understand the extent of your fadail? And surely we cannot understand the extent of the fadail. You know why? Because we are born after the time was created. While Ahl al-Bayt are those who were created before the time. When there was no skies and there was no earth and there was no time. That time Ahl al-Bayt were created. And Allah directly created them Therefore, the unlimited God created the beings which were unlimited in understanding of this limited human being. How can you collect the entire water of sea in a glass of water? Is it possible? It's not possible. We are so limited, even our time is limited, our life is limited, our understanding is limited, our jahan is more. 
So our limited capacity cannot absorb and understand the unlimited being of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And that is one of the points with the tent Imam alayhi salatu wasalam is raising and pointing out to us and is saying, O Ahlul Bayt, I cannot understand you. How can I present you? How can I explain who you are? How can I describe who you are? How you are? No. It's not about capacity. Whatever we are mentioning of the fawail and the praises of Ahl al-Bayt, those are only limited to the human understanding. But in the al Jam'ah, The tenth holy Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, Imam al-Hadi, has extended the knowledge and he has shown that how unlimited this sea of barakah Almighty Allah has granted us and we are proud that we are the lovers of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this complete knowledge of Ahl al-Bayt was disclosed on the day of Ghadir by the Holy Prophet. And that goes to my, I go to my second point now. The comparison of the history of Ghadir with the Holy Quran, insha'Allah ta'ala. In reference to the Holy Quran. Amir al-Mu'mineen is the first Ali. His imamat was declared Not on the 18th of Zil Hajj only, but the ayat of the Quran. Whoever thinks that the Imamat of Amir al Mu'minin started on the 18th of Zil Hajj on the day of Ghadir, the ayat of the Quran refutes him and says, Ya ayyuhal rasul balligh ma unzila ilayka min rabbi. Now, I don't need to. Uh, give a translation in this Arabic uh, environment, maybe my translation is weaker than your understanding of Arabic, but for my youth and for my youngsters, I would translate it uh, a little to make it just easier for understanding. Ya ayyuhar Rasul Almighty Allah says, O Messenger, Balif ma unzila ilayka marra. Deliver what has been given to you, the message that has been given to you from before. Then Almighty Allah continues, وَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلْ فَمَا بَلَّغْتَ لِسَالَتَهُ And if at all you don't give this message out to the people, then you have not conducted your office of messengership. You have not delivered the message. Wallahu ya'asimuka min al-nas and Almighty Allah will save you from the vice of the human. Praise the Sabbath Allah, Salaam wa ta'ala, Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. This is the meaning of the ayah. Now, the imamat of Amir al-Mu'minin did not start with the, and the wilaya of Amir al-Mu'minin does not start on the day of Qadir. It starts much before. That is the reason Almighty Allah is saying, Ya Ayyuhar Rasul Balligma, Unzila Ilayka. Unzila is past. What was given to you in the past. He does not say, Ma Anzala Ilayk. For the present, that what is being sent to you now. No. The Wilayat and the Imamat of Amir al muminin was sent to the Holy Prophet in the past. And when was that past? Amir al-Mu'minin himself, we have a hadith which uh, Amir al-Mu'minin mentions. We know about one tradition from the Holy Prophet in which the Holy Prophet says, Kuntu nabiyyan wa adamu bayna al-ma'i wa al I was the Prophet when Adam was not created. Before Adam's creation, before the first human was created, I was a Prophet already. I did not become a Prophet after I was born, no. Or at the age of 40, I became a prophet, no. Kuntu Nabiyan, I was a prophet. Even the first human was not created, I was Nabi, I was a prophet. And we have a hadith of Amir al muminin and he says, Kuntu Waliyan, aw kuntu Imaman, aw kuntu Wasiyan Nabi, 
Wa Adam al ma'i And when Adam was not created, I was already the successor of the Holy Prophet. I was already the Imam. I was already the Hujjah of Almighty Allah. That is Amir al muminins Imam had already started much before. And the Holy Prophet goes on and he says, Almighty Allah, he called me to the sky for Mi'raj. Why? Because he wanted, he ordained me and he ordered me to give the message of Imamat and succession of Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad When you recite loud salawat, I know that you are awake. The Holy Quran is a bit dry subject. Yes, I understand. And history is also dry. But when there is a comparison of dry and dry, then it's like minus and minus becomes plus. So I don't know whether this formula is working over here or not. Dry and dry makes it wet. Uh, that I will leave on your salawat sound and it will tell me whether it's wet or dry. Amir al muminins Imam was given to, to Rasulullah the ordinance to give this message to the public and deliver this message of Imama to the public in Mi'raj also. So Amir al muminin was Imam, but delivering the message of the Imama was given to the Holy Prophet. Almighty Allah did not instruct him by sending Jibreel. But rather he called his Prophet, Almighty Allah called his Prophet to the sky and he directly instructed him, Ya Rasulullah, give the message of the Imam and the succession of Amir al muminin to the public. And in this ayah, where Almighty Allah says, Ya Ayyuhat Rasul, Rasul is a messenger, a messenger who has been given a message to deliver. And then Almighty Allah says, Ya Ayyuhal Rasul Balligh, give the message. In the entire Quran, Almighty Allah has used Balligh once only. The, the, the word Balligh, which comes from Tabligh, yes, you know Tabligh, we say Tabligh. Tabligh is only the spreading of the wilaya and the imama of Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi wa you know why? Because that was the only message that was making the messenger, that is, that was making the Rasul a Rasul. And that is what Almighty Allah says in the Holy Quran in the next part of the ayah. Wa illam taf'al, if you don't give deliver this message of wilaya and succession of Ali. You have not delivered the message. But O oh, Almighty Allah, Rasulullah in his last months of life is told that if you don't deliver this message, you are not a messenger. You have not delivered the message. What does it mean? Namaz was already there, Hajj was already there, Khums was already there, every wajibat was already there. Rasulullah was returning from Hajj when he was getting this message. If you don't deliver this message, this message, that means you are messenger only because of this message, not because of namaz, not because of Rosa. I hope I'm clear. And Almighty Allah is clearly denying the messengership of messenger. By saying, no, you are not a messenger if you don't deliver this. You are not delivered the message. How can you be a messenger? So I am saying from this deduction and from deducing from this ayah, I am saying those who want to believe and who want to be Muslims and who want to claim that Rasulullah is the messenger, they have to believe in the succession of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi, for which by believing the succession of Imam Ali, you are believing that Rasulullah is also a messenger and he is a Rasul. Otherwise, you are denying the messengership of Rasulullah himself. 
So, this ayah was delivered in three parts. The first part came, Ya ayyuha rasul balag ma unzila ilayki man rabbik. O Prophet, deliver the message that has been given to you of the Imamat of Ali Abi Talib from before. Rasulullah discussed with Jibreel, Jibreel returned to the skies, he came back with the second part of the ayah and he said, وَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلْ فَمَا بَلَّقْتَ رِسَالَةَ If I told you don't deliver this message, you are not a messenger. You will not deliver the message. Your mission is failed. Mission failed. And then Rasulullah still discussed with Jibreel. Jibreel returned to the sky. He came back and he said, Wallahu ya'asimuka min al-nas. And Almighty Allah will save you from the vice of human being. Done? Rasulullah, after this ayah, he gathered people in the Wadi al ghadir Wadi is valley. Valley, you know, uh, in the desert there is plain, desert, or there is mountains and valleys. Valleys are a bit deeper. So, Ghadir, if it all you see, is actually a valley. It's, it's like this. It's like a dish type uh, uh, facet. 124,000 Ashab were there according to history when Rasulullah was told to deliver the message of the Imamat and succession of Imam Ali. Rasulullah called everyone around in this wadi of Ghadir, in the valley of Ghadir. It was summer time when Ghadir came. It was on 18th of Zulhaj. Summer time. And you know in Arabia, 50 degrees, Summer, even this time the Hajj was in summer, in the afternoon you would see the Hujjaj were less in Khanai Kaaba because of the heat. But Rasulullah in this heat, he delivered the khutbah of three hours. How many hours? Three. It was so hot that the scorching sun was burning people on their heads from above. And the heat of the soil was making it much hotter. Then because of the large gathering, the heat from the bodies of people were making it worse. And because of the shape of Ghadir, the valley, all that heat was just hitting each other, so they were hot to the end. Ya Rasulullah, why in this heat you should have taken some shady place and given them three hours speech? But no, Rasulullah said, in this heat, in this valley, where there is no shade, you listen to me. Ya Rasulullah, shorten the majlis. No, no, three hours. <coughs> that means tonight I have a liberty to recite three hours for you. Sallallahu alayhi Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. So now the Prophet, isn't it? Of the day of Ghadir. But I will not recite for three hours. You know why? Rasulullah recited for three hours because those surrounding Rasulullah were not all mu'mineen. Aksaruhum munafiqeen. Well, I am gathered tonight with Mu'mineen, you are the believers of Ali ibn Abi Talib, Salawatullahi wa salamu And therefore, I don't need three hours. I wasted to my time, don't worry about it. But uh, Rasulullah, three hours he recited the khutbah. And what did he recite in khutbah? Everything from before. I delivered the namaz, I delivered all the rights of Almighty Allah, I explained you the rights of the humanity, I explained you akhlaq, I explained you this, all the list, Rasulullah, and they said, yes, 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 ya Rasulullah, yes, yes. Then he said, oh, listen, listen, listen. Don't go anywhere. Tawheed I've given, Nabuwat I've given, Adala of Almighty Allah, I've shown you, I've, I've told you about the Qiyamah, yes, yes, yes. Then he said, no, no, no. The message is not yet over. Then he says, I'll ask you three questions. The first one, Alastu awla bil mu'mineena min aba'ihim. Don't I have more authority on mu'mineen than their fathers? 
how much is the authority of a father on a mu'min? That a father, if at all he instructs his son on some mustahab amal, then that becomes wajib for the son to follow. And if at all he restricts him from makruh, that becomes haram for the son. So for example, if at all the father insists on the son to go for Salat al-Jama'ah, it becomes wajib on the child to follow Salat al-Jama'ah. Yes, to go to Salat al-Jama'ah. That is the right of the parent. The father. The Holy Prophet says, Don't I have more right on the mu'mineen, on the believers, than your fathers? And what did they say? Qalu bala ya Rasulullah. Yes, ya Rasulullah. You do have more authority on us than our fathers. Rasulullah said, it's not enough. Alastu awla bil mu'mineena min ummahatihim. Don't I have more right on the mu'mineen than their mothers? And what is the right of the mothers on the child? The hadith says that if at all the father and the mother call the child together, then you should answer your mother. Second time, if at all they call together, you answer your mother first. Third time they call you together, you answer the mother first. And fourth time, when the father and the mother call you together, then you answer your father. That is the right of the mother. And the Holy Prophet says, Alastu awla bil mu'mineena min ummahatihim. Don't I have more authority on the believers, on mu'mineen only, than their mothers? And they said, Qalu bala ya Rasulullah. Yes, ya Rasulullah. Then he said, no, it's not enough. He says, one last question. Alastu awla bil mu'mineen min anfusihim. Don't I have more right on the believers than themselves with their own rights which they have on themselves? What is our right on ourselves? Our right on ourselves is that whenever the parents instruct us to disobey Almighty Allah, then we have the right to refute their order and save ourselves from hellfire. Oh, and fusakum wa ahlikum nara. You have to save yourself from nar, from fire. So that is the right which we have on ourselves. They said, Qalu bala ya Rasulullah, you have more right on us than ourselves. Then Rasulullah picked up Imam Ali and then he gave the message. But he picked up Imam Ali and he rose Imam Ali. He took him by the shoulders and he raised Ali ibn Abi Talib on his shoulders. The history says that the white under his arm could be seen by the public. That much he raised. The face of Rasulullah disappeared. Only Ali was to be seen on the hands of Ali, on the hands of Rasulullah. And he says, Ala wa man kuntu mawlahu fahada aliyun mawla. And then he doesn't stop there. He says, Allahumma wa ali man wa alahu wa aadi man aadahu. Whoever loves Ali, O oh Almighty Allah, love him. And whoever hates Ali, you be the enemy of that person. And that is what Rasulullah gave that message. Now you know normally in the cartoons also nowadays for the children or in the movies also, whenever they want to show Ghadir, they show that Imam Ali is standing next to Rasulullah and Rasulullah is raising one hand of Imam Ali and uh, he is saying, Allah wa man kuntu mawla wa fahada aliyun mawla. History denies, this. history says, no, 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 this is wrong. Rasulullah had risen Ali ibn Abi Talib by hiding his face and raising Ali on his two hands. That Rasulullah was not to be seen and it was meaning that Rasulullah was saying whenever you don't see me, see Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salam. Three hours of khutbah and in these three hours of khutbah, not only did he say, Man kuntu mawla wa fahada aliyun mawla. He talked about fadail of Bibi Fatima Zahra in detail. Fatima tu bada'atun minni man adaha faqad adani. Fadail of Imam al-Hasan, Imamat of Imam al-Hasanin. 
Al Hasan wal Hussein Sayyidah Shababi Ahlul Jannah is mentioned in Khutbat Ghadir and the twelve Imams and the nine Imams from Sulb al Hussein are all mentioned in Ghadir and then he brings about the discussion about the rule of Imam Zaman يَمْلَأُ الْأَرْضَ قِسْتًا وَعَدْلًا كَمَا مُلِئَ الظُّلْمًا وَجَوْرًا and this is mentioned also in Khutbat al-Ghadir in these three hours Rasulullah was mentioning عَلِيٌّ بَابُ حِطَّةٍ مَنْ دَخَلَهُ كَانَ آمِنًا Ali is the Lord of forgiveness like that which Almighty Allah had kept in Bani Israel and the Israelites and in the form of Musa that whoever entered this door, he was forgiven. Ali is that door in my ummah. Ali yun ma'al haq wal haq wa ma'ali. Tafadha, I just read in three hours, Rasulullah was telling these people, 124,000, understand who is Ali. Understand. Lahmuhu lahmi wa damuhu dami. His flesh is my flesh, his blood is my blood. Three hours. And after the three hours, Ghadir was not one day event, it was a three day event. Because Rasulullah, after the declaration, he said everyone should give oath of allegiance and do bay'ah of Amir al Mu'mani. 124,000 people, all were giving bay'ah one by one to Amir al Mu'mani. So it took three days. But you know what happens? when you will go for voting now next month what will happen you'll vote and then you'll come out isn't it you tell your vote Rasulullah said no 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 this is Ghadir you do bay'ah and don't disappear wait here until everyone has given bay'ah so that you are shahid that everyone has given bay'ah to Amir al-Mu'minin and accepted Amir al-Mu'minin as the successor of the Holy Prophet and as the Imam. And after all of that, three days. Ya Rasulullah, why do you delay the people for three days? And you know what happens? If at all a person goes to London, say for example, he drives up to London, you know, it will take around two hours and he will be there. But if at all a person doesn't reach up to five hours, you'll be worried, won't you? You, nowadays we have telephone, we have mobile, we'll just call him and say, all right, where are you? What happened? Oh, there was a puncture and oh, there was an accident. Oh, there was something, God forbid. And that's the reason I was delayed. Or oh, I was waiting at some coffee place and I was just enjoying some coffee for one hour. Yes, you can get the message. But at those times of the Holy Prophet, there was no telephone, my dear. There was nothing. People knew how much distance a haji would take from Makkah and come back to their cities. They knew how many days it would take. And everyone was delayed for three days. So when they reached, everyone reached in his city, the family started asking, what happened to you? Why three days delayed? Where did you get stuck? Was there an accident? Was there everything was peaceful? And everyone had to mention Ghadir and the Imamat of Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa sallam. So not only 124,000 people who were there with people in the Ghadir heard the message of Milayat of Imam Ali. But even Rasulullah delayed, him, delayed them three days purposely so that the message of the man kuntu mawlahu fa'adha ali al-mawla reaches every house and the risala of the Holy Prophet becomes mukammal and complete with the message of delivering wilayat of Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that is the reason in the hadith it is mentioned that the Holy Prophet once called Amir al muminin and in closing I'm reciting this hadith because today I have seen that you have been tried out. So let me just make it a bit wet before I close and that is Rasulullah called Amir al muminin and he said, Ya Ali, can I give you glad tidings? Can I give you good tidings? Good news? Ya Rasulullah, please I'm waiting for the good news. 
the Holy Prophet said, Ya Ali, Almighty Allah created me and you from one soil. And the entire humanity he created from different soil. Our soil is different and the soil of Ali and Imam Rasulullah is totally different. And then he says, Ya Ali, on the day of Qiyamah, everyone will be called by their mother's name. But Ya Ali, you and your Shia will be called by their father's name because their birth is pure. That is the reason they have love of Ali ibn Abi Talib in their hearts. Your birth is pure. And the sixth Imam says that whenever you feel the cool and tranquility and peace in your heart and of the love of Ahlul Bayt, pray for your mother, for your mother has given you a pure birth. So we pray to Almighty Allah and we thank Almighty Allah that He has granted us the love of Ali ibn Abi Talib and his family. And I pray with that specific prayer which is the best of the prayers on this night and on this day and on this celebration and I say as on the day of Eid we say Allahumma adkhilna fi kulli khayrin adkhilta fihi Muhammadan wa Ali Muhammad wa akhrijna min kulli su'in akhrajta minhu Muhammadan wa Ali Muhammad salawatuka alayhim ajma'in Allahumma akhir lana dhnubana وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا واغفر لنا إنك أنت الغفور الرحيم اللهم أدي ديوننا واقضي حوائجنا واشفع مرضانا وارحم موتانا وعجل في فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان واجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره وشيعته ومحبيه والثائرين تحت لوائه والمستشهدين بين يديه برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين صلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين